Eric Becker, the naturopath. Thank you for coming back. How do you know if you're sensitive to food? How can you work it out? Well, it's pretty simple. You're going to eat that food and you're going to feel something. So you can either feel something orally. Okay, you can feel it in your throat. You can feel a tongue or lips. Or you're going to feel it a bit lower down in your stomach, like cramping pains or things like that. If it's a food allergy, especially a type 1 allergy, you'll feel it like that, usually really quick. Often within an hour, you'll feel it. As I mentioned, I feel that sometimes with kiwi fruit, so I tend to back off the kiwi a little bit. Um, berries, I can eat you know, handfuls of blueberries every day. I don't get any reaction to them. So you will know what you react to in that sense. However, when it comes to the intolerance, it's a little bit different. Because remember, allergies and we've got food allergies, okay? And um, we've got food intolerances under that sensitivity umbrella. So how do we know we're intolerant to that food? This is where it gets more difficult because it's more delayed. Often people who know they've got an issue with food will test first. They'll do a food allergy test. And then that will show different antibodies. And then based on the antibody profile, they can pull those key foods out, especially the high category foods. And usually that will mean things are slowing right down and that's the end of the problem. If it's still a problem, you know, seven or eight weeks after that food's taken out, then you, know, you can start going further. But usually a person will put enzymes in before that point or probiotics and that will fix the problem. So probiotics and enzymes together often fix a food intolerance, you know, relatively quick. Food allergies only work by withdrawal of that food and then building the gut flora back up again. So good solid gut flora and plenty of enzymes there can really mitigate the symptoms of a food allergy to a high extent. We'll talk about that a bit later on. So what was the question again? How do you know you've got a food sensitivity? Well, you'll know you've got signs and symptoms. All right? So what are the signs and symptoms, for example? Let's read a few of those out. These are in a candida crusher. So if it's a type 1 response, all right, not long after the exposure, allergy symptoms may become apparent, including swollen hands, itchy or swollen eyes, sense, uh, sensations in the lungs, um, even the throat could feel closing, or <clears throat> dryness or choking feeling in the throat. Anaphylactic shock, though, is different. Okay, that's when so much okay histamines being put in there, where the the person's person's heart rate can go right up to, it can be quite dangerous actually if they've got a lot of adrenaline there. Uh, uh, even so, fast heart rate, um, already got stomach cramping, diarrhea, hives, swelling, itchy, and skin rashes. Bee stings kill more people than snake bites kill people in Australia every year. Especially people in swimming pools, they get the bee, unfortunately, down the throat. So you have to be careful. Uh, other people like me can get stung multiple times a day and hardly feel anything at all. So, um, but yeah, let's have a look here. So allergic symptoms can appear within two hours or less after consuming the offending food, but can happen sometimes instantaneously. Usually the skin, airway, and digestive tract are the key things that you'll feel with those responses. With the, um, the food intolerance, however, you don't usually get this like, wow, this pain kind of effect. It's more delayed and insidious. And, and you know, Some of the symptoms I have seen with patients over the years when it came to intolerance, even were insomnia, couldn't sleep properly, restlessness in bed at night, um, hot body, even burning feet. I've seen weird symptoms with food intolerances. And often it came through a deficiency or a lack of a mineral or vitamin that you know, preempted that symptom to come up. So this is again where it's confusing when a symptom is produced through a deficiency caused through an intolerance. All right, more, more prone to have it from the intolerance, I find, than from the allergy perspective. People with allergies don't tend to have those kind of issues as much um, as the, the intolerance patients. So, yeah, we'll talk about that in the next video. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you got something out of this one.